coming from a background of working with Playboy, back in the day, everything was lit with strobe. Everything had to be lit with strobe. I mean, no matter what, we had to make sure everything was just very high quality. We didn't have the type of reflectors that the Sunbound system gives us now. When I discovered the Sunbounce, which was several years ago, it was by accident. And I was actually down in Florida working on a shoot down there, and I had hired a local assistant to work with me down there. We're unloading my gear, and then I see him putting together this apparatus. And I looked over, and I went, what is that? I walk up and look at it, and he holds it up, and he does all this, and he shows me how it works. I'm like, oh my god, I love that. And I said, uh, how much did you pay for that? And I think he, at the time he said, like, I don't know, $250 or $275 or something like that. And I said, oh, well, I'll give you like $350 for it. And, and he's like, what? And I said, I'll buy it from you when we're done. And, and he's like, but I just got it. I go, but you're going to make $75. You can go buy another one. And he's like, well, I guess that's true. Okay. So I bought his Sunbounce, the, one of the very first ones that had been produced, and loved it. True and story? I, true story. And I've used them ever since. Working for Playboy for all those years was probably one of the most instrumental things in helping me become the photographer that I am today. Being able to do the kind of things that I do on location, get it done, no reshoots, make it happen right then, uh, learn to light quickly but nicely, that's what comes from the history at Playboy. This is one of the issues from back when I was um, on staff at Playboy, which for me was a project that was very special because it, it allowed me to really reach a little bit more into my bag of tricks, so to speak, and uh, have to work on location in Alaska. We shot all over Alaska on frozen lake beds, on glaciers, and so it was almost two months that I was there. And it was an amazing experience having to work in all conditions. These are the kinds of things that I can apply to contemporary shoots that I'm doing nowadays for catalog work, advertising, and that sort of stuff. One of the things that I'm doing is I'm, I'm photographing Chantal with her backlit. By that, the sun behind her, which will give a nice edge. Now, I've placed her here for a particular reason. It serves two purposes. Besides being attractive, it also gives Chantal something to work with. She can lean against it, move back and forth, exactly, get her body all curvy and all that kind of stuff. As well as, if you'll notice in the background back here, I've actually placed her where she has this dark foliage and a, and a wooden wall back here. And what that does is, as you'll notice as the sun burns out her hair and edges her body, she's delineated because of that darkness back there. Because as you're opening up to get the proper exposure on her face, by using the, the, the bounce fill of the sun bounce, you've got nice pleasant light on her, but the background is going to brighten as well because you're letting more light in. So what you want to do is you want to have a dark background to delineate this highlight rather than shooting up toward the sky, which would actually blow out and or become white. Okay, but something else to note is I've noticed that Chantal's hair being so very pretty and blonde. <laughs> One of the things that we have happening with someone who has very light blonde hair is that it, it burns out. In other words, it's way above what, especially with current digital technology, can handle. So you want to try to control that. So what we're going to do is we're going to add the Sunbound Sun Swatter to diffuse this a little bit It'll still allow an edge, it'll still allow it to be bright because her hair is so light anyway, but it's going to control it, get it within the range of your chip. And then just rotate it to the left. Keep going. Lean it back a little. There, there you go, perfect. Can you hold that? What we've done, by adding the sun swatter, you'll notice there's still a highlight up here, and with her very, very blonde hair, it's going to be a little bit of an, an edge, still a highlight on her shoulders right here, and then it's, it's going to give us a nice highlight on the hair without being completely blown out. And it's going to be controllable. The chip 
a chip in a small camera will be able to handle this much better. You're not going to have that blowout, you're not going to lose the detail, and you'll be able to bring it in, especially if you're shooting in the raw format, which is what you should be doing, you know, most of the time. I rarely, if ever, shoot JPEGs anymore. Uh, it's the, the quality is just not enough, so I shoot raw, and then I'll create JPEGs from the raw files later on. Okay, now, I want to do, uh, I'm going to shoot you full length. So all I'm going to do is back up a little bit, but you're going to be standing a little more like this, a little more, again, back and forth. So I'm going to move back. Could you come to your left? You use that light on her, but block me at the same time. Yeah. Right there, right there. If you can do that, that'd be awesome. Perfect. Nice, good. Chin up a little bit. Because the product comes with so many variations on a theme of fabric, from gold for the warm, to white for just a neutral, nice, clean reflector fill, to the scrims, it just gives me a lot of variables that make my quality of light exactly the way I want it. I can take and produce a open shade image whenever I want, a direct sunlight image, but soft, diffused, direct sun, to backlit front fill and it's all in one or two of the products and I apply it to work that I'm doing for clients around the world such as Venus USA it's a swimwear company that's getting into doing sportswear this was something that I shot using the California Sun Bounce but the light on her was was not that great I mean as you know shooting in open shade sometimes you've got real contrasty light the, the pockets in the eyes look bad but we used a couple of Sun Bounces here to pop a little light onto her to clean it up, just as if you would do it in a studio where you're using a, a key light and then a fill light, I did the same thing using two sun bounces, one a little bit further away than the other. And it worked tremendously well, and it ended up being a cover shot. And so I, I do that a lot, especially with the swimwear stuff that I shoot for them. In fact, there's a series of shots in here that I did when it actually uh, started to rain. It got very dark, I mean, deep, deep, dark rain clouds, but we had to keep shooting because, I mean, we're, you know, we're on location, the, the meter's running, so to speak. So what we did was we took a sun bounce and set it up to my right with a second sun bounce to my left. I slowed the shutter down to allow the background to become hot, to burn out, so to speak. And then I strobed the models with popping strobes into the sun bounce to create this broad, soft light, as if it's open shade, to create the illusion that it's still sunny behind them, when in reality it's raining. And we, we, actually, we actually put a sun bounce above their heads to keep them from getting wet. Saved our day because we were looking at not being able to get anything done and we ended up shooting pretty much the whole afternoon. <laughs>